hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven today with a scale figure review. This figure over here is one of my biggest misses, biggest mistakes when it comes to predicting aftermarket figure values, but we will discuss about that in a moment. Before that, introductions. This is Kotobukiya's 1x7 scale, Anastasia Nikolaevna Romanova, very Russian name. From Fate Grand Order, FGO, this is a Castle class servant. One servant that I'm not very familiar with, to be honest, but hey, the Ice Queen vibe going on with this character. I do like the character design, so why not purchase one, right? Okay, so I bought this figure very recently for about the equivalent of 19,000 Japanese yen, yeah. In Chinese yuan, yeah, renminbi in Chinese yuan, I bought this from a figure store in China. It was around 950 or 960 Chinese yuan, I think just under 1,000 yuan. And when you convert it to Japanese yen, yeah, about 19,000 yen. So that is about the MSRP, the recommended retail price for this figure. This figure was 17,800 yen MSRP, but that was before any taxes, including Japanese taxes. So not too bad of a pricing and shipping cost me an additional 138 Chinese yuan. Yeah. Well, not too expensive. The shipping cost is still way cheaper than shipping from Japan. Shipping from China is much cheaper. So in terms of the value proposition of this figure, I would find the price I paid for acceptable. At the same time, I wouldn't pay more than the amount I have already paid for. Yeah. The thing with this figure right here is that she is going for 20 plus, 30 plus thousand yen. I was interested in this figure back then when she just came out in November 2020. Yeah, that is one and a half years ago. Or is that, is that more than two years ago by now? Yeah. I thought this figure wasn't really a high priority because, well, she isn't the most popular character in FGO. I thought that I could wait, right? The problem was I forgot about the figure's existence. Yeah, I decided to wait maybe 6 months, 8 months before buying it at a discount, but I forgot about her. And by the time I found out about this figure going up for 30,000 yen, I had a bit of a panic attack, like how did I miss this? I do have backups, right? I went over to China's Taobao, I looked for figure stores that still have her, and yeah, her price is starting to go up over in China as well. So when I saw the price of less than a thousand Chinese yuan, I quickly snatched her. I did not think twice because I don't want to miss out the opportunity. So here we are with this figure here on my desk. My past few FGO figure reviews have been so good that there are virtually nothing to complain about, barely anything to complain about. So this figure of Anastasia over here, or Anya as she is fondly known as, this figure of Anya is not exactly perfect. Far from it, there were a few small issues going on. So that is actually a very nice change of pace, right? But at the same time, these small issues, quality control related issues actually, they are in line with my expectations of Kotobukiya. I personally don't think of Kotobukiya that highly as a figure brand. All right, before we move on about the figure, let's mention about the box quickly for a second. So this is what her box looks like and to be honest with you guys, the box is way smaller than I was expecting. I was expecting bigger because I knew this figure is going to be heavy. Kotobukiya's figures, for some reason, they are very heavy. Heavier than Good Smell or Alter's equivalents at the same scale. The materials they use obviously is a bit different, like they use more PVC in terms of a percentage. So as a result, their figures are rather heavy compared to other figure companies who make more use of materials like ABS, which are lighter. Okay, so with this box over here, this is one of the least attractive boxes from any figures I've purchased in the past year. I think this is not a very nice figure. I mean, the colors are also kind of bland, but complaining about the design of the box is kind of pointless. So let's talk about the durability. So with the box, it is actually relatively solid. 
the cardboard part at least is rather solid. The problem is there is not much protection for the figure because this figure, it is like the figure barely fits in the box and there is not much extra space or much leeway for the box to take any physical hits during shipping. So this box actually does not provide that much protection to the figure unlike what the hardness of the materials suggest. In fact, one of the windows here, as you can see, yeah, it is starting to come off. And this isn't the first time a Kotobukiya box arrived being in this way. My Kotobukiya Miyamoto Musashi was also like that. The windows, these plastic windows were coming off by the time they arrived. So yeah, this is just a very ordinary, a very mid box. Nothing, not really great to be honest. Okay. So back to this figure. Speaking of the figure box does not provide too much protection for the figure itself. This is where disaster sort of happened with this figure. So just now doing unboxing in the earlier part of this video, really that, that isn't much of an unboxing because the figure is literally in one whole piece, nothing to assemble. Most Kotobukiya figures are like that. And depending on your personal preferences, that might be a good thing or a bad thing. To me, I don't like that at all to be honest. And I'll describe why in a moment. So with this figure, what happens is that she actually arrived broken. It wasn't that obvious during my unboxing, I think. As you can see, the head is loose. Yes, her neck is completely fractured. The silver lining, the good news over here is that Kotobukiya actually used a rather substantial metal rod to reinforce the neck joint. So that is always nice to see. And... Fortunately, I can just put the head back like this and the figure does not appear to be broken at all. You can't see the fractured neck at all. Thanks to this ring around this collar around her neck, it conceals the fracture line. And yeah, you can't see any gap. So this is a very easy to repair damage if I wanted to. Just put a reasonable amount of glue, press it down and the figure will be fine. And you won't even see a trace of damage being left behind. Okay, so is this Kotobukiya's fault? I would say maybe Kotobukiya played a very minor role, which is the box not providing sub uh, substantial uh, protection for this figure. But I think this is more to the fault with the shipping process, the couriers, which they toss your parcels like a basketball. Yeah. So you see with this box over here, there is there are no signs of damage, like no dents, right? But it does not necessarily mean that the courier did not treat the parcel badly because normally boxes become dented when you place heavier boxes on top of them. That is when the box actually caves in or you sit on the box, right? So however, when you toss the box, you just throw it like that. For example, you throw it from the floor, you pick it up, you just toss it into the back of a truck. Yeah, the box is not going to have any dance at all. At worst, maybe you have some dance at the corner. Like over here, as you can see, there is a very minor damage on the corners over here. This is a sign where they toss the box like that into a truck during transportation. So with this figure's design over here, it is a huge risk when you toss a figure box like this because... The first thing is that this figure is exceptionally heavy for a 1x7 scale figure. Yeah, this is a very heavy figure. And to make things worse, the two heaviest part on this figure is the torso, the main body, due to her dress. And the second is her head. I mean, look at the hair over here. Over here. The hair is quite substantial. So when you have a very heavy head and a heavy torso, with the neck being so thin, the neck is an obvious weak point of this figure. So when you toss the box of the figure just like that, yes, the neck is going to fracture eventually and that is exactly what happens with this figure over here. Now let's talk about this figure of Anastasia in terms of the sculpting, the paint job and so on. So with the sculpting part, this figure is more like a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10 maximum. Yes, the figure definitely looks like what we saw in the prototypes and as well as the official product photos. 
Kotobukiya rarely gets the face of their figures wrong, so there is nothing wrong in that regard, the face of the figure, which is arguably the most important part of any figure. However, the sculpt is definitely not very refined. Number one, the seam lines on top of her head. Yeah, you can see it for yourself over here. It is way too obvious that it's not very good at all. The same can be said along the sides of the hair over here. Yeah, you can see some roughness to the surface finish. It is not smooth enough, you know. So it feels a bit unfinished as if they did not sand and polish the surface properly before they paint the figure. Number two is when you take a look at her right hand around the knuckle region over here. Yeah, look very carefully and you will notice a mold line over there. To me, this is kind of unacceptable for a scale figure that is almost 20,000 yen in price tag. And then number three, at the back of her cape or her dress over here. Yeah, this region. A lack of refinement is very obvious. That is a very rough finish over there. Number four, the doll she is holding over there. Yeah, more imperfections on the surface right here along the side of the doll. These are the things where I normally come across in quite many Kotobukiya figures, not just this one. This is not the first time. So if you inspect very carefully this figure or any other Kotobukiya figure around this price range, those that are between 15,000 to 20,000 yen, yeah, you might come across at least half a dozen such imperfections in the sculpt department, in the seam lines and so on. Overall speaking, this is about the amount of expectations, the amount of quality I expected from Kotobukiya to begin with. My expectations on them are not very high. My opinions on Kotobukiya is that they are more of an average figure company, about B tier or so, B to B minus, yeah, not great, but not that bad either, right? I still like this figure a lot despite the flaws I've just shown you guys. Because Kotobukiya is such a huge company, I think they are bigger than even Good Smile in a way that they make so many model kits and they have other branches that make Marvel DC stuff too. So yeah, the amount of mass production and rushing they do, they don't delay their products a lot. Quality control issues are definitely going to appear no matter how because of yeah, the sheer amount of things they make. Moving on to the paint job of this figure, I would say that it is adequately good enough, nothing exceptional. There are really not much flaws going on. Things like paint transfer, paint scratches, paint bleeding and so on. If I look hard enough, you can see some grey colour paint transfer or paint stains in front over here. Yeah, you need to look hard enough to notice it and I believe this is probably only my copy or very few copies. Not every copy will have this issue. Any other inconsistencies on the surface of the paintwork, such as a rough surface finish? That is not necessarily the problem with the paint job. It is more of a problem with the sculpt I mentioned earlier, a lack of refinement. That surface beneath the paint layer itself, yeah. So if the surface is rough and poorly finished and then you apply a primer layer and the paint itself, it is going to reflect on the very top layer, no matter how thick of a layer of paint you are applying, yeah. There is not much weathering or shading on the paint job either, but I wouldn't expect that on a character like this with very bright colors, a lot of white colors. This kind of color scheme, yeah, you won't see much shading to begin with. The only gradient in paintwork I can see is this blue color region behind her, yeah, that is about it. So the paintwork department, not too much to complain about, actually. Moving on to the last part of this figure, which is also the best part in a way, the base. The melting ice base with icicles coming out of it. I really like this base a lot, it looks amazing. Thanks for giving us Joroma bases Kotobukiya instead of plain round disc bases, you know. But at the same time, my biggest complaint with every Kotobukiya figure. Well, not every, but almost, is also present in this figure, which is Kotobukiya permanently gluing the figure to the base. I don't know why Kotobukiya do this all the time, I really hate it. Because as a figure photographer who builds dioramas for figures, sometimes I want to have complete freedom with how I design my figure base, my diorama. 
and I need to be able to remove the figure from the base. And with a figure glued to the base like this, I have less flexibility. I have to design my diorama around the base of this figure and blend it in seamlessly. Yeah, less flexibility. So I don't like this at all. Some of you might not care at all. Less assembly, less hassle. Just take the figure out from the box and display it. But seriously, I hate this. Yeah. However, the good news with the base of this figure is that if you look beneath the figure, yeah, this figure has plastic foot bags, but in the middle of the plastic foot bags, there are actually metal rod reinforcements. So that is a good thing. It is very unlikely for the foot bags to break unless the courier treated your figure, your parcel, way more roughly and violently than, than they did to my figure over here. Yeah. So at the end of this review, is this figure worth the purchase? And why did I buy this figure even when I don't have that high of an opinion on Kotobukiya? The reason is very simple. Well, no one else is going to make a figure of this Anastasia over here. Yeah, not Amakuni, not Good Smile, not Outer. No one else is going to make a figure of this character. Not in this version at least. If we are talking about other ascensions, other character designs, or other servant classes, maybe. But this exact version, no. I think this is your only option over here. You don't have much of a choice, which is why I went for one. And then, is this figure worth the purchase? Well, it really depends on the price point you are looking to pay for this figure. If you are paying for her between 15,000 to 20,000 yen, I would still say this is still... A sensible purchase, not a bad purchase, but for the aftermarket prices of 25,000 yen or higher than that, yeah, 30k, 40k, it makes no sense. I wouldn't pay that kind of money for Kotobukiya figure, seriously. You're better off spending that 30,000 yen on an altar or Amakoni figure or even Questio figure. They are much better, yeah. So, what do you think of this figure? Maybe you already own one all these years. And if you do, please do let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this figure of Anastasia. And thank you very much for watching this figure review all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, please do consider giving this video a like and subscribing to this channel for more detailed reviews like this in the future. Thank you very much once again and see you soon. Goodbye.